Well, hello, traveler. Today, the Cavern Queen visits a neighbor, explains a mine colony's mistake, and takes her first steps into a more magical world. everyone, it's Lady Shakana. Thanks for coming back to join my adventures. I am back in the colony and alive and <laughs> I've taken all the arrows out from our last adventure. Uh, Tim and Hat and I did uh, go back and we finished uh, making that dungeon safe and getting our corpses and various other things. There was lots of really cool stuff in there uh, and a lot of uh, bad news bear googlies. But we're back and I've been doing a lot of work on the colony and there's a there's a crazy person back there. Look, hello. Hi. Hey, crazy guy. Timothy. Hat. Hello, Timothy. Hat. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, I'm here. Yes, no. yes, Yay. you are here. Yay, good for you. Okay, all right. Uh, in a little bit after we do some stuff, we're going to actually go take a look at Timid Hat's uh, colony today and see what uh, what he's managed to do. So, uh, it's night time. Timid Hat, do you have your do you have your sleepy bag? Uh, there we go. Thanks. Sleepover. Oh, little sleepy baby. Look at him. Look at him. Delightful. Okay, so uh, I did do a bit of work doing some uh, diggy diggy diggy. The first rule of Build Club is dig. Uh, everybody knows that. This is, uh, this took me a while, several hours. I figured you guys didn't want to just watch me dig dig digging. Uh, this is going to be the Tasty Hall which includes the restaurant and the tavern, the bakery, restaurant, tavern, bakery, and the fishermen. So uh, we've got, we're at the building stage now and our builder should be coming. Hey, <laughs> hey. Good job, good job, you got me. I was totally not paying attention and not expecting that. And I should have been, I should have been expecting that. Okay, so uh, yes, mega halls are huge and they take a long time but in the end they look so cool that i think they're worth it what we do have happening here though is you can see that it's quite dark and there are no googlies that is because as a group my family decided that we really wanted to just use torch master and the mega torches they're expensive but we did some work and went and got some things uh they need diamonds and gold but uh we definitely love them because they cover it's about a about a three chunk radius uh, out from where you drop it and it prevents mob spawns and we decided that we don't want this to be a frustrating experience we want our builders to be able to build and not have to worry about them so uh, all of us uh, do have the mega torches going. So just to make things uh, safe and happy. So yeah, and then our other builder is here working on uh, the next connector. And over here we've got a, uh, a standard connector and the next intersection. And then we will get started on the next mega hall, which uh, is going to be the scholars hall. So we can get that university going because you need that university pretty early on in the game so that you can research all the various buildings that you need. So uh, that's what we're going to work on next. But I love this stage where they start building and you actually you know, start seeing the, uh, the halls really coming together. This particular one does take a lot of diorite, but luckily I picked up a ton of diorite while opening these caverns and things up. So I actually had enough sitting in my chests to, um, to build everything that he, he needed for this. And, uh, birch. So I just had planted some birch out there and, uh, and, picked that up. So we'll let him work on that a little bit. Uh, haven't done anything new down here. We got uh, that hall. So up there is that mega hall and under halls is the hall lower. 
and this is where I'm actually going to put my residences because I love being able to put the housing right under the hall so everybody who lives here works upstairs and that means that your citizens are going to be like super close to their workplace and that makes them much much happier. And I did get the uh, two guard towers finished built but uh, one thing that I didn't do, and you'd think that I would know all the tricks and do everything right, being the person who actually designed this style, but I don't. What I should have done when I originally established the colony and I placed down my town hall and uh, I did it out here, the town hall, when you place it and start your colony, it establishes from that spot outwards and so when we take a look at, um, at the map we had placed it right around here somewhere and so this is the center of our colony and it actually claimed all of this space in front which includes um, you know a lot of lake that we actually don't need we could have placed it um, two or three or even four um, blocks or chunks further back, which is what we should have done. So what we should have done is actually dug into the mountain a bit, uh, a couple of chunks, like probably to around here. So just dug a corridor here, placed it and established so that the center of our colony would have been here, which means it would have taken to over here somewhere. Because what we have right now as a result is when we get to the other end of uh, oh, putting in things that are waterlogged, that's why we've got water happening right away. Um, but what's happening is the, because we're so close to the edge um, right here of the colony, we actually don't have enough room to put um, the next intersection and connectors to be able to put the guard towers in easily. So we're gonna have to put in a temporary guard tower just to push the colony borders out so that we can do that. But if I had set my colony properly, that wouldn't be a problem. So that is uh, just a good thing to keep in mind when you are establishing your colony is that that first place where your town hall is, is going to be the center and take that into consideration as you are establishing. So I'm gonna have to do a workaround for that uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on. That's what's happening. So we're gonna let uh, let our builder keep doing the thing, and we're gonna wander over and we're gonna visit Timid Hat, see what he has going on over on his colony. So we already have. He has a uh, waystone over there. I'm pretty sure. Uh, right here, this should take us over to Timid Hat's colony, and. Oh, oh, he put the stone right into his supply camp. Look at how... Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that must be one of the Ars Nouveau scribes table. Very nice. Very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so this is, if I recall correctly, that is the Urban Birch. Yep. Yep. Uh, urban Birch camp. Um, and, oh my goodness, look at this. You've got a portal, you've got all kinds of storage, you've got all these Ars Nouveau things, and wow, look at this. It's so interesting to be working on Cavern and working underground and then come and see somebody else who actually has, like, you know, the sky and the sun and the wind on their face. Yeah, very exciting. So what do we got going on here? We've got, is that the... University. The university, okay. Yeah. The university is very important to get going pretty quickly. Uh, uh, this is the math class. And this is <laughs> the math the, class. The very um, full and lush uh, armory class. Yeah. Very full and lush. Yeah. Timid Hat is a big fan of math. Um, yes. He loves math. So uh, that would be a good thing. So this is a, so this be a level one. And that's going to look pretty cool when it's done. Yeah, this is the guard's tower. Oh, okay. Right there, a little guard's tower. And that Here's would be... Here's my citizen's hut, level two. Level two, citizen's hut. And builder's hut right there. Yep, also level two. 
So level two. So you, you've actually done quite a bit of work and not just Art Nouveau. I mean, I started late, you yeah. know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I do still have the Art Yes, definitely. And, and this is something that I'm going to have to learn because you've done some very cool thing with the things with the Ars Nouveau. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm essentially do all the things. I can fly. You can fly. Yeah, exactly. You can fly. You can do all the things. So this is uh, really cool. So your build style for your colony is definitely uh, what I would call uh, cozy. So everything looks like it's going to end up being quite close together, uh, which is really cool. Like everybody has a different kind of build style. I tend to build much more spread out. So I think this is going to look great. Yeah. Uh, deciding like what direction I want to build out. I also have a forester hut being built. Forester hut, very important when you're building in just, just birch. Uh, so that's going to be really great. I am very much looking forward to see how this ends up going. And yours looks very nice too. Thank you. Thank you. It's just a very different, different thing. Also, Have you had any, any, uh, any googlies come out of the, come out of the thing? Uh, no, but I have had a few googlies going in and then when I walked in, there was just like a zombie once. Oh, that's really unfortunate. I haven't actually been to the nether yet. If I go in there, am I going to fall into a pit of lava? Um, no. You want to follow me? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's go to the nether. Keep watch, guard. <laughs> let's check it out. It's funny, I take so long to do a lot of stuff that um, things like going to the nether... Oh. I have waste on up here. Warped, warped blocks. I do like warped, as as you guys will see when I get higher up. I use a lot of warped. I'm a big fan. Well, uh, okay. it's waste here you are. I got you to force you. Also, over that direction, there is a crimson forest over there. It's oh. not too far away. Well, that's handy. Uh -huh. How? How? See, because you can fly. <laughs> I can't actually. There we go. Okay. Oh, another portal. Nice. And let's see. Taking a look. Oh, that's a nice big area. Is there a uh, is there a fortress nearby? Here? Um, there is one like only a thousand blocks away. It is across a lava pool. Ah, well, I'm going to uh, not then there, go okay, check. I that do out. have like a little uh, base there. Um, with warped, uh, warped wart blocks. Tough, tough to say. <laughs> um, I have a waste on there. Delightful. So you've made it over there already. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. All I right. may have died. Once. You may have died more than once. Okay, well, I'm going to not attempt to do that as of yet. But it's nice to know that I can just come over here and get my warp blocks for that when I get uh, later in and got dark while we're there. So, I'm going to head home. Thanks for showing us around. You're welcome. And uh, you have <laughs> definitely got some crazy going on here. Yeah. Good job. Alright, heading back Good home. Good luck with your colony. Thanks. Okay. Back home. Sleeping through the night. You slept. All right. What are we gonna do today? What are we gonna do today? We've got uh, got this on the go. We've got that on the go. We've got two citizens happening. We've got a lot of water <laughs> happening. So normally, uh, water would not be placed until the end of a build. Uh, it goes in about at the same stage. Uh, I believe it's step five uh, as when you put in the lanterns and torches and things like that. But a number of these blocks here are um, actually put in as waterlogged, so uh, they have the water in there. So that's why it's looking like that. So doing some good work. You're doing a fabulous job. I'm super, super proud of you, my dude. And see as more come in, it uh, blocks that water. But it'll be interesting to make, see 
if we have any problems with that. Um, I have to admit that when I do my testing and things like that, I test um, in a creative environment. So I paste things in and I don't actually have them build directly. So this is actually the first time in a long time that I'm doing a full like survival kind of a build of my style. So it'll be interesting to see if we discover things that should be fixed. Though people, I've got a lot of uh, amazing Mine Colonies uh, players that have done extensive testing for me and they report back and let me know all the things I need to fix. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this uh, how this all goes, but what are we going to do next? What should we, uh, maybe we should actually start some Ars Nouveau stuff. And uh, I want to see what I can figure out on my own. And then if I get uh, overly confused by anything, I can get Timid Hat to show me what's up. So as you can see, I have a ridiculous amount of stuff in my racks, uh, lots and lots and lots of cobblestone. So when we get the university up, one thing that I tend to do with the research, everybody does their research path differently. For me, be, with Cavern, uh, I tend to um, go towards the Crusher and the Sifter pretty early on because you think about it you've got so much extra cobble like you do use a lot for your uh, stone bricks and things like that but you end up with so much extra that being able to crush and sift that and get like all of the uh, iron nuggets and things like that is really 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 beneficial because you need all that iron for all of the different um, lanterns and things like that that come with that come with the cavern built. Uh, so that's one thing I do. I kind of push towards that. And I don't tend to push towards, um, you know, like the, the forester stuff and things like that. Because you don't use so, like so much wood. Looking nice in there, hey? Looking good. Doing, oh, see? Yeah, look at that. As she got all of the things. Oh, do you have a. Uh, that Frostwalker or whatever it is. Yeah, it's Frostwalker. Frostwalker. Um, but uh, yeah, it's good to see that the water is all cleaned up as all of the blocks get in there. Which makes sense because nobody had uh, reported to me that it was wrong. So, okay, I'm going to find my Ars Nouveau book, which I put away in a safe place. I believe it's called the Worn Notebook. Yeah, worn notebook. There it is, right in there. So let's take a look. Take a look in here. It provides spell crafting, magical devices, powerful trinkets, and magical entity automation. How exciting! Getting started. It is recommended to follow each section in order. Well, that makes sense. Spell casting. A whole lot of things that we'll read. Um, and we're going to add some effects and augment and there's a lot of reading in this one actually. Uh, okay, so you make a That's novice. Okay, so he has a novice spell book. So we need an iron, one of everything basically. Except a hoe. Except a hoe. One of everything except a hoe. Do we have any iron left? Or I know I just used like most of my iron. We'll have a few things. So let's let's see what we actually have in storage that we might be able to do. So we've got an axe and we've got a sword. Uh, here's a regular sword. And we needed a pickaxe. I don't think we would have a pickaxe. No. And we need a regular axe. Uh, no. So I think I'm actually going to have to go... Oh, I've got a few, a few ingots. I have almost no iron. I'm going to have to go, go out mining. So we needed a shovel and a pickaxe. And let's make those. Right, we needed a shovel. And we needed a pickaxe. 
And what else do we need? Uh, oh, that was it. So, and a regular book. A regular... Ah, uh, it's okay. I've got a book. I know I had found it. So, there we go. I think we've got all the things we need to make the initial book. And it was called the Novice Spellbook. And there we go. And we made our first book. Yay! Okay. That's very exciting. Breaking. I made an unbreaking X. How did I manage that? Ooh. See that uh, that magic bar comes mana. up in the corner. Mana bar. I said was. Oh, I clicked and it was an invalid spell. Apparently. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Uh, open the spell book. Quick select. So C to open the spell. Oh. There's an Enderman in your colony. Ah, uh, leave him alone. I hear there's uh, an Enderman, and his name is Barold, and he's a really nice guy, and you should leave him alone. Oh. Yeah. What if you shoot him? Don't shoot him. Leave him alone. Okay, so there we go. So I've got a bunch of reading to do, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to read all the things and figure out what these various things do, and then maybe I will know how to do one of the cool things that Timid Hat does uh, by the next by the next episode. And so yeah, so we didn't do anything super exciting today, but you got all the updates on where I'm at here and uh, where Timid Hat's at. And maybe sometime soon we'll check where Hangry Hobbit is at. He is also building a cavern style, so it'll be interesting to see how his looks different from mine. And uh, I have I have mentioned him. He's uh, a lurker. He just likes to lurk. He will not be uh, not, as lurky as not quite as lurky as you. That's right. Okay, so a less exciting uh, episode, but I think we've uh, we got a lot of things done, and I very much appreciate you hanging out with us, and I hope that you are having a fantastic day, and that we see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye.